So every Friday, Valerie Leonard, my business partner of 16 years, and I get together via video chat, and we talk about our, the markets, where our portfolios are headed, and what we need to do. During the week, we each gather data from individual sources, write down our viewpoints, and then on Fridays, we come together and we start talking. I'm sharing this with you because today, well, it was totally awesome to be honest with you. The discovery that we are starting to work on and the research we're doing, well, I really wanted to share it with you. Let's first start off with, I'm a pessimist by nature. I just believe at some point, somebody's gonna break my heart, something's gonna happen, and well, you know, that kind of thing. But over the years, I've really tried to become more, well, bullish. Seeing the upside, understanding that, yeah, the way I see things may not be the reality of things. Like for instance, federal government stimulus and intervention. See, I guess I'm old school. I look at the world and go, markets should determine pricing, not governments. My thesis has been for a long time that you can't grow economies by just flooding them with money, like we've seen for the last 10 years. See, quantitative easing has grown to massive levels. I mean, look at our deficit in comparison to the growth of the S&P. So the first question we asked was, do markets go up because of economic growth or because of liquidity and momentum? The answer is liquidity. What we realized was we were leveraging up from the tech bubble to the housing and financial crisis of 07, 09 by lowering interest rates and putting mortgage people in homes and loosening up mortgage lending guidelines. And that created the housing slash financial crisis. So looking at the financial crisis, what, why did that escalate and become so big? The answer is you, Joe, who didn't have to prove you had an income, were able to get a mortgage or multiple mortgages on multiple properties. I mean, if you've seen this, this big short, you see that adult entertainers had multiple homes and didn't have to prove their income. Uh, it's a, you know, based on a, a novel, but it's reality. In the end, those mortgages were then packaged up and sold as investment grade bonds, okay? So then from there, you could take a bet or contract that would say, if you thought that mortgage, if you thought it was gonna go down, you could exponent, exponentially profit from that downturn. And that's where we saw basically five, six people who actually profited incredibly well on that idea. Well, then came out that all of a sudden, delinquency rates started to rise. And the delinquency rates happen because you don't pay your bill. Why don't you pay your bill? Because you don't have money. You can't refinance. You don't have money to pay the bill. So then you become 90 days behind. All of a sudden, you create basically a financial nuclear bomb. It took two years for the government to step in and backstop that market. And that's quantitative easing. Since 09, we have still had quantitative easing. And what that is, is injection of money into the system, the lowering of the cost of the money, which gives everybody the ability to, in a sense, leverage up. Going back to the question I have always asked, has the last 10 years truly been a growth period or a expansion in credit and leverage? Is Amazon truly worth what it's worth today? Is a Tesla worth what it is today? Is um, any high-flying tech stock or any, well, heck, any company right now worth what it is when you look at its true growth and what it does? Or is it a leveraged up company? Flash forward, it's 2020. We enter the uh, first of the year and in our, situation, we saw a movement from a sector two, which is growth uh, is accelerating, inflation is accelerating, and the Federal Reserve is haw hawkish. 
to a point to sector four, a move to sector four, where we see slowing growth, slowing inflation, and dovish monetary policy. And all of a sudden, COVID hit, and markets became illiquid, and we had a liquidity crisis, and the markets went down. Markets rebounded relatively fast to all-time highs. Why? Liquidity. Liquidity and momentum. If you compare the financial indexes to the tech indexes, vastly different. One's negative, one's positive. We have migrated to a technology mindset. A lot of this has to do with Generation Y and Generation Z. See, they're more risk takers. They're more followers of trends. And right now the trend is Microsoft, Apple, Tesla, Amazon, Google, and all these other tech companies. It's not your banks. Where are we at today? Valerie and I came to the conclusion that the housing market may be the culprit for the next crash. Here's how we came to that conclusion. We started looking at housing sales and lending rates. They've exponentially grown when it comes to sales and the cost of money has gone drastically down. But in the last 29 weeks, banks have tightened, tightened up their lending requirements. Why have they done this? Well, I believe it's because the liquidity that was injected into the second and third quarter is now dried up. All of a sudden, those people who had money, who were able to do their jobs from a distance, are now struggling because they're not getting that ability to do that. And the businesses they work for are starting to slow and the banking system is starting to see it. So here's what we did next. We started doing research. What are the 90 day delinquency rates on mortgages? You know what surprised us most? And this caught us for a split second off guard was that delinquency rates in the, between the first quarter and the second quarter have dropped. They've dropped under a percent. They've dropped. Why? Well, if you remember back during the first part of this 29 week COVID crisis, banks and government came in and said, you can claim forbearance. You don't need to pay your mortgage. If you're having financial issues, we can delay it and tack it on to the back of the mortgage. Governments came in and said, you cannot foreclose or kick anybody out of their rental home or housing until the 1st of 2021. So delinquency rates on mortgages and defaults have dropped and it's because of artificial stimulus. Our question is, and I believe the banks are reacting to this, is that are we about to see, once that Band-Aid is pulled off, a massive increase in default rates when it comes to first and second mortgages? Are we about to see commercial residential real estate start to plummet because of the lack of income that they have been getting and the inability to kick somebody out or evict them because they haven't paid their rent? Will this all snowball in the first quarter or will the government step in again and backstop this market? Well, so far, what we've seen out of Washington is, well, a lot of bickering, a lot of tweeting, a lot of this and that, but no results, no confirmation of where we're going. We move to the presidential election and if the Dem Democrats get in, then it's gonna happen this way. And if the Republicans get in, it's gonna be this way. And then if it, there continues to be a divide between the two parties, well, nothing gets done. So what does that mean for us? How do we risk manage around this? See, I'm a big believer in becoming more of a believer that we will have government intervention, that we will see markets continue to possibly move higher, if not just go sideways because of government stimulation. But we could have a situation where when we rip the Band-Aid off of foreclosures and evictions, we could have another housing crisis. So what are we doing? 
how do you risk manage this? Well, I believe you've got to watch the macro. You've got to watch the fundamentals. Watch the people who are lending the money. Watch the politics. As much as you frustrates you or raises your blood pressure, you got to pay attention. Because the thing that will keep this thing going, in my opinion, and it's only an opinion, is another package of stimulus. But as Valerie and I discussed today was, when does that end? Or does it ever end? And if it doesn't ever end, what does that mean for our credibility as a country? And how does the rest of the world see us?